This is the real. The one and only. The one and only. Real Thank Caroline. Welcome back to Cena's Garage Gearhead in Training. I am at SEMA for day two. I made it to the Real Deal Revolution booth. Last year they had, it was called the She Shed, where they had multiple different groups under one booth. The Real Deal Revolution does workshops. Right now they're going to do leather work. I asked them permission already. They're going to let us kind of watch what they're doing for a little bit. Let's check it out. Um, so what are they doing, Sarah? Yeah, so these guys are all making their own tooled leather keychains. So we work with it's vegetable cute. tan it's leather. Um, we've cased the leather now. They are putting stamp designs in there. And then we're going to let it dry for a bit. And we've got some great dye here from Feebings that we're going to put on there. And then we're going to use the saddle soap to clean it up. And then we're going to put some leather sheen on it to finish it. And then we're going to rivet them rivet the keychains on and um, yeah they'll get to take something home that they made themselves That's none of them awesome. have ever done leather work before so they're all doing it for the first time and they're getting to get creative and get some tools in their hands and see if it's something they like are you teaching leather work any other days this week or is this yeah we are doing workshops on friday as well Awesome. And then we also have workshops. Um, the other ladies are teaching pinstriping, yeah, automotive jewelry, carburetor rebuilding. We had plastic welding the other day. So we have all kinds of great free workshops all week. Um, Real Deal Revolution on Instagram and Facebook. And check us out on the website. We've got our whole schedule on there. You can sign up for the workshops and see what time they're at. Um, yeah, and we pop up at events all over the country, uh, motorcycle and car shows. So check us out and come take a workshop. We've got great Dickies give, uh, workwear to give away to the workshop attendees. They sponsored us, took good care of us, keep us ready to work. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. I met Moira last night, and one, you have like the most awesome energy ever. Um, <laughs> so could you explain a little bit about like what you guys are doing here? We already talked about some of the workshops, yes. and I see you talking to people as they walk up. Like, What kind of information are you sharing with people? Well, uh, we are now sponsored by Dickies. So we have a small little prize pack that we give people, whether it's um, rags or our little stress balls. Um, encouraging people not to throw them at people because it's not a ball but um, just giving them the good word about what real deal revolution is and how we're keeping Jesse's spirit alive through all of this and encouraging women and just having women show up in the room doing our workshops etc and if they give us a follow on Instagram or Facebook we give them a nice little price back so you guys should do that you should do that. And for people who don't know who Jesse is, because you give like a really quick. I know there's a lot oh, to say. There's a lot to say. So, um, Jesse, the best way to put it, I think, is that Jesse, Jesse is all of us, right? She, she did such a great way of paving the way for welders, mechanics, just in her way of showing up, making it normal, right? Like, because it shouldn't be weird that women are in this space. And she made everyone feel welcome, and men, women alike. It's not weird that we do this. And it's that power that she just gave to me that it's not weird. <laughs> so we can exist in this space. And I, I talked to some people about like my thoughts of embodying empowerment and it's really cool you guys are doing that here yeah. at the booth by doing these workshops because i i'm a firm believer of we embody that empowerment when we do hard things correct that we can provide tools to people we can help people yes we can't do it for them correct and you guys are doing that here where you're providing all the tools and then if someone wants to sign up you guys are teaching them like i yes. did the carburetor rebuild last year and it's 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 a different feeling versus like there's so many other things in the world where like yes you put in the work and sometimes it takes time especially on a like a car build or something like that you get that satisfaction you look at it you can drive it you can touch it like i did this right and that is the embodiment of empowerment you guys are doing that 
for as you like helping women, you're also offering it for men as well, which is really, really cool. And I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And I wanted to make sure I featured you guys today because they're awesome. I'm going to make sure to put all of your guys' stuff in the caption. If you guys want to follow along, do, if you guys are going to be at SEMA, sign up for some of their workshops. Yes. Because uh, they're really great. Yeah. And we're full for today, which is awesome. But tomorrow is going to be pinstriping and carburetor rebuilding. So it's next level arts and crafts. I love it. Thank you so much, Moira. You're welcome. I was walking past this Jeep and really wanted to know what the heck I was looking at. And sure. I was introduced to Micah. Would you mind explaining, like, what is this? What is this? This is a, a question that we get a lot. So this is a 2015 JK. It's been highly modified. It was originally designed or modified to, uh, to take a 24 valve um, uh, Cummins diesel. And it, it, was, it was built for, for that application by a, a shop down in Clearwater, Florida. Um, we reached, so it, it, if, you, if you look, the, the front end of this was extended to accommodate the inline six cylinder. So, um, I, and I know this is, this is part of, the, of the, uh, the riddle that we have here. We have onboard generation of power with the diesel. So we're able to generate electricity for the batteries with the, 20, with the 24 valve Cummins. We have an IM425 uh, paired to the back, 250 kilowatts of, of, of power to the batteries. Uh, so, so we'd be able to ex basically extend our range uh, for the EV use, utilizing the diesel. So with Strayton, that's how it ties in because of the batteries? Because of the batteries, yes. We, we have a lithium battery that we are, we're manufacturing. It's, uh, for, it's, it's actually for forklifts, but we configured it for, uh, for, for this EV application. We, as a company, we also do, we're in, we're in all sorts of energy. We're in, we're in transportation, so all your, all your lead acid batteries that you find at any standard automotive store, we manufacture those. We have two facilities in the United States that, that make those. Uh, we also have an industrial uh, trans industrial uh, sites that we do uh, uh, nu uh, submarines, nuclear submarines. They, 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 with the big lead acid batteries that are used for ballast and power and and, and power storage. We also do uh, battery uh, battery systems for uh, building ba power backup. So um, this. This is going to be a great test bed for us to do this. We want to make sure that we're ready for next hurricane season to, to be able to uh, supply power to communities in, in the event of power outage. You know, with what we had happen here recently with Helene when it went up into North Carolina, we would have loved to have been ready for that so that we could we, we could supply power for the for, for, for critical infrastructure, whether it be, you know, uh, um, uh, pharmacies, you know, you need, um, you know, there's certain things that require refrigeration. Uh, it, just people, just just maintaining communication with with these communities that are cut off, and obviously with this with this platform, we're able to, we'd be able to get there in the event that the roads that that, that the roads uh, were to be washed out. You know, chances are we're going to be able to get there. And that's why you wanted a bigger vehicle that can do off road. Is this meant to do more like rock crawling or like fast? Uh, it's going to be more. It's going to be slow. Okay. It's going to be slow. Uh, is, is is the intention? Uh, obviously, with the with the additional ground clearance that we have, you know, water crossing, getting over large obstacles, things things such as that. Uh, the getting back to the electrical side. So I, I mentioned the, um, the the ability to, to to power the batteries. There's no. So when you're in the woods, you don't have any EV charging stations. Yeah. So we'd be utilizing the diesel for that. Now we also have an identical EV motor attached to a custom transfer case on this. It's an IM425 made by Cascadia Motion. Don't feel bad. I didn't know what an IM425 was until until I started this project, <laughs> this project. So it's it's actually manufactured by it's owned by Borg Warner. Um, so it's a bit that's a big a big company. Um, the but the IM425 it makes uh, 550 horsepower at and 2,000 foot pounds of torque. So it is a real really good for for pulling heavy loads, spinning big tires, things like that. So it's a very good. A very strong motor. And I guess that's my question with like, okay, it has it, you said it has a diesel? It has a diesel, yes. And it's an EV. Yes. Doesn't diesel make it, a, like that's where I'm confused, like so, if it's a, an electric, like. So, so wrapping your head around it. So yeah. one, of the, one of the questions I get a lot is, is this a hybrid? Well, to me, a hybrid has a mechanical connection between the internal combustion engine and the drivetrain. This does not. This is, a, think of this as an EV with an onboard generator. So it's like opposite of what like the regular gas car because the battery, it uses the battery kind of as a... The battery is going to be the primary source of, of, of drive to the EV motor. There's two, there's two motors in this. One, one that's, that's paired to the back of the diesel mm -hmm. that generates electricity. Then we have a set, another IM425, so we have two 
another IM425 that's ran to a transfer case that then that then transmits power to the to the rear axle and and then one to the front drive shaft for the for the for the front. So is the diesel on all the time, no. or do you only have it to at charge? Well, and and the, one of the goals that was that was thrown down for us at the beginning of this project, we, we started this about a year ago. Uh, as far as hey, we're going to build a an electric Jeep is what we we're told. We you know being in the battery manufacturer, we want to really push how quickly we can charge these batteries. So we we were given the challenge. We said, all right, 60 miles an hour. We're going to run for one hour and be able to recharge from 10% state of charge to 80% state of charge in, in 15 minutes. We haven't proven that yet. The, the math works out. We sized everything based off of that. But once you start pushing those, those numbers into the batteries, you start getting hot. You know, obviously with, with lithium, you, you, that's your limitation is how hot can you, 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 do, you don't want to hit the point of a thermal runaway because once it goes, it's, it's going. But we, so the intention, we're going to be really testing the, um, testing the batteries here, you know, being a manufacturer of this. Um, uh, we'll break them if we have to, that's okay, because we, we make the batteries. And you we'll, have to we'll, learn how we'll, to... We'll, we'll learn, we'll learn from that. But we have, we've tested um, the, the cells that we use in this, and they and they are, um, they're, they're, they seem to be holding up at 4C, at least in the lab, they're doing that. Um, this is a SEMA build. Will it actually go out on... Yeah, correct. So we, we uh, it was just last Wednesday, so it's, that's a week, a week ago. Congratulations. Uh, yes, a week ago that we actually got it driving under its own power. So um, we, we were able to generate electricity in a, in a st on, on a stand using this engine and all that stuff, but it's a lot of work to get this thing ready to go. So we, we, got, the, uh, we got the EV motor operational um, with, uh, with all the electronics and it, this thing drove in, in here under its own power. Um, but we've got a lot more work to do to it with as far as development for this. And we'll be, it, the other thing that's great, you know, I had mentioned that the, what we were told to do as far as the charging profile, mm -hmm. drive it for one hour, charge it. The other, the other possibility would be to just run it for, uh, just to run it at a, at a very efficient RPM and keep it charged. Yeah, that would be, that would be, an, be another option. So it's, it's going to be a great test bed for, for development. We're going to be able to help communities in the in the event of natural disasters. We'll have a response team. I I, I hope to be part of that response team and in, in, in the event for of that. But um, yeah, that's that's basically it. And that's the awesome. project is called Reluctance. Reluctance. Okay, Reluctance. so I'll make sure to put everything in the caption so if yep. people are interested in following along. Uh -huh. And do you know approximately when you'll actually be able to take this like out for actual tests, like out in the wilderness? So um, I don't I don't know the dates. Do we have a consumer electronics show um, in January? So we have some work we have to do to this yet in order to in order to have it ready for the consumer electronics show. But 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 then we need to be ready for. So that's in January. So from January to hurricane season, we need to, we need to be ready. So we'll be. Uh, we do. We have two other Jeep Gladiators that are at the Apex show right now. Cool. And we run those. Um, we run those in Moab quite a bit. Sand Hollow, uh, th th things like that. So they're they're but they're not electric. They're they're ju they're just diesels. Very ca very capable off road Got it. machines. Awesome. Well, good luck with everything, and I, I look forward time. to seeing. One more time. Christina. Thank you so yep. much, Mike. You, you bet. That was pretty cool. One one thing that I didn't really understand as much before is about the EV stuff, and my thought was, well, does it make it a hybrid or whatever? Like how he was saying, and it made sense how he explained it, and it would be pretty cool if if that application helped in disaster and it would explain why they made the vehicle so tall because that was the first thing that I was wondering when I first walked up there, what, why is it so, like why would you build it like that? And when they said it's for disaster relief and stuff like that, I, I think that's super, super cool. This is Steven with Good Guys. I met him at a, one of the Rex Hutchison lunches and it just so happened that we're both at SEMA together. There we go. I would love for you to share a little bit about the car giveaway. Yeah, we do a giveaway car every year. This one's an 87 Monte Carlo Aero Coupe um, built by Goolsby Customs. It's a program that we do. We've been doing it for decades now. Um, give the car away or build a car, show it for a year. Give it away every year at our Columbus event, biggest show of the year for us. Um, and this is the one for 2025. So we'll show it this year and give it away next year. How do people sign up for that giveaway? So, uh, we'll pick, there's gonna be about 17, 18 finalists. So we pick a finalist from every event. If you bring a car out to our show, you'll get a lucky ticket. On Sunday after the award ceremony, we draw one lucky ticket and that person becomes a finalist. And then those are about 15 finalists. And then we do one from our entire membership base. We do a randomizer, pull one random member. 
And then we have an online portal. If you go to good-guys.com, under the promos tab, you could sign up online and we'll pull one person out of that to be part of the finalists as well. All the finalists come to Columbus. They all get a key. Only one key starts the car. I love that. Yeah, so it's, they all get a chance to turn the key. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So how did Good Guys kind of start? Yeah, so Good Guys have been around since 1983, 41 years this year. Um, and we just do car shows across the country. It all started in the Central Valley with Gary Metters. He was uh, looking to put on some events and started the first one in Modesto. And then we called Pleasanton home for 38 years, and now we're based out of Texas. Um, but as you can see here, we cover coast to coast from Delaware to California, Texas, Iowa, Columbus, Seattle. Um, try to hit the, the country pretty well. 15 events throughout the year, and uh, we just try to put on America's favorite car show. And with, I don't see as many young people at Good Guys, and obviously, you know, things are kind of shifting with what people have interest in terms of cars. Like, what are you guys thinking, like, as a moving forward, as, you know, the generations are starting to hand over to their kids and stuff like that. Yeah, so we're definitely trying to bridge that gap, get the younger people involved. The whole industry is doing it, right? So you're seeing years of uh, vehicles that are creating products for, you know, the, the Fox Body Mustangs. Rocha Shop's got a bolt-on chassis for Fox Body. Um, OBS trucks, Grand Nationals, you know, G body stuff like that. Um, and with good guys, we've opened up our years to 1999 to welcome those cars. So the aftermarket's there. They're supporting those newer cars. They're more affordable, affordable to purchase. We're giving them a place to bring them and show them. Um, so just trying to, to be more inclusive for the newer stuff, those, those later model vehicles, and give them a place to, to bring them out. That's great. Yeah. If you guys haven't been to a good guys show, you absolutely should. It's it's really great. The people are awesome, and the culture is my, my favorite part yeah. about it. Yeah. So thank you so much. I absolutely. really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. I grabbed all my stuff, and now I'm heading over to South Hall. I've been in Central all day, which is pretty cool and also like i, I want to get over to check out the tools building at some point maybe tomorrow or the day after fingers crossed now so i'm so i'm retracing my steps a little bit from yesterday you saw when i walked out past these cars and then outside i am passing that now and i'm going towards south Upper. I'm so silly. I didn't realize that South Upper is where the tools are. <laughs> this is where I wanted to go anyway. I'm gonna walk around a little bit. I'm so new with all this stuff that I don't know what most of the tools are. I only have like home set stuff. If you guys didn't know me well enough, I absolutely love dragons. And the Quantum Machinery booth has a massive I asked them who built it. They didn't know who built it. They, they purchased it. It's definitely a, a stopper. I would definitely take this home with me. I don't know where I would put it. Somewhere in my yard. That is so cool. Ugh. I gotta get all angles so you can see it. I love the details. I wonder how much it weighs. It's probably super heavy too. They have a helicopter in here. I wonder how in the world they got a helicopter in here. Looks like they're paint, they do paint. Dark arc. That is really cool. Too bad I can't get all up close to it. I love that. How long did it take to paint the helicopter? I personally do not know, but I would probably say about a month. A month? That is so cool. Thank you. Wow. I found you! Yay! <laughs> and then, oh, I mean, she looks so serious over here. here. The real oh Caroline. Y'all? <laughs> this is the real. The one and only. The one and only. Real okay. Caroline. <laughs> and James with HH Wheels, is that how you pronounce it usually or do you? Yes, it's all HH Wheels. H -H Hilton Wheels. Head Wheels is where that comes from. We're on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. So HH Wheels is Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. But I put the wheels behind it because we pretty much do anything and everything to do with wheels. 
from bicycles to motorcycles to cars. Most of it's cars lately, but every now and then we'll do a throw a motorcycle in there. If it has wheels, we're into it. Yeah. Well, and the crazy thing is I, I was following you before I started following you, and then they were at SEMA last year, and I just didn't get to, and I saw that you guys were here. I'm like, oh, dang it. And then this is, the, well, I met you yesterday for the first time. This is the first time James and I met, and I really wanted to touch on how SEMA offers more than just products that not only do they have educational sem seminars, they have opportunities for meet and greets, and so you can meet your mentors, you can meet the people. Like, we had never met in person, even though we talk online or we follow each other, like we've been able to sit down and have really great conversations. And I think there's a lot of value to that. Um, you guys have been to SEMA more times than me. Uh, what, what have been your experiences with this? Oof, man, get that out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many opportunities to build relationships here of any kind, a mentor level, a friend level, the amount of friends that we've made over the last four years of being at SEMA who are lifelong people who have come and visit us at our home, people who have been actively a part of builds we've done and vice versa. It's insane. Yeah, I, it's our fifth year it's in our a row. It's fourth year. It's our fifth year in a row. And yeah. So anyway, our, I can remember our first year coming mm -hmm. and it was, Caroline really was really nervous coming in here because she you know, she'd never been to any kind of show like this, trade shows. I've been to trade shows a bunch of times. Not, I was at SEMA in 17, um, and I met a lot of people then, which was really fun, but I just came as a spectator. You know, I didn't have any kind of YouTube going on, any kind of, you know, uh, wanting to be in the industry. I just love the industry. I'm just a big fan of everybody. And I'm still a huge fan of a ton of YouTubers out there, TV personalities. You get to, you really get to meet all of those people if you come here. They are very accessible, and it's really important uh, that, it, that if you do make it to SEMA, to just expect that. Be able to come, meet up, have a conversation. It's it's made the, really, it's made Caroline come out of her shell and blossom into who she is because she get, has got to meet a lot of people that inspire her uh, from day one when we came in in 2020. Um, it was, it was just, it's just been amazing to watch her develop. Yeah. yeah, I feel like there's this preconceived notion of when you're trying to market yourself, like kind of how we are, um, it doesn't matter whether you're an influencer, content, content creator, or even just a company that's trying to sell a product, just be yourself. Like, especially here, you need to be 100% you because not only are you gonna consistently tell the same story, but you're gonna feel so much better about somebody loving your product or yourself or, you know, for instance, our YouTube videos are a way of a product for us and it helps us sell other products for other companies. And at the end of the day, they want you to be your authentic self and this is honestly one of the best and safest spaces to do that. I've also noticed too, like an encouragement to other people, like don't walk in having expectations. <laughs> See, the, the, we're, we're gonna have to do more content together because we're all goobers and... We, <laughs> I love you guys. What's the, um, the ASMR? Oh my gosh. Wait, I don't have those nails. We gotta... Tick, 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 tick. Oh, look at these tools. Down, down, down with the mic. Um, <laughs> it's, it's cool that like I've been getting more encouragement from people that when you show up and you're not expecting anything, you're not demanding anything, you're showing up being yourself. And these people here see it all the time. They can see through it if you're just in it for getting something out of it. And, and they're like, man, it's kind of refreshing to talk to somebody that's just, hey, this is what I'm doing. I really like what I'm doing. I like what you guys are doing. Do you want to collaborate? Rather than going, I want this for free. I want this for free. You need to sponsor me. And they're like, who are you? So it's, it's really cool to be able to see more people, like pretty much everybody that I've connected with here are super authentic and encouraging more people to do the same. Cause I feel like we're getting away from the sleazy salesman, like mentality, mm. like in, in yeah. like what people are looking for real people and especially social media and YouTube has actually made it a lot easier for real people to be accessible to. I, you know, this is such a good point. I, I, I made that a point to, to Caroline as long as it's like, let's focus on the content. The, the companies and the businesses will come to us and, and they'll want to work with us. The people that really want to work with us come to us and they want to work with us. Starkey comes to us, want to work with us. Uh, you know, Arbor Freight, 
the other companies that we've, we've dealt with. I mean, the list goes on and on. Hoosier, Continental, Prismatic Powders. Um, they have contacted us and wanted to, to work through, you know, whether they see Caroline's, you cover your face up? Whether they see uh, Caroline's uh, uh, reels on, on social, you know, on uh, Instagram or uh, catch our video on YouTube and see if it's doing good or if they, you know, we catch their eye. I think uh, we focus on the content and, you know, the companies that reach out to us, those are the ones that we want to work with because they get it, you know, and there are a ton of companies out there. You go out there and you could ask. You could ask 100 companies in here and not one of them would say yes. But the ones that are actually contacting you already, those are the ones you want to really work with because they they believe in what you're doing already. So. And for me, because I'm, I'm, I, my growth is so slow, which is, it's part of it, right? You're like, every once in a while, sometimes you might be able to go woof. But yeah. like, I've been going to people, not asking for anything though, just sharing my story. Hey, and most of the time I have a connection with whatever product or uh, like Holly, for example, like my dad had this stuff, like most of the companies I've interacted with, I got the parts from when I inherited all the parts. And I'm like, this is my story. I want to learn about the product, not saying, oh, you need to da da da. It's like, hey, I already have this product. Can you teach me about it? And can I share about it too? So like my angle is a little bit different. It's that same idea though, that if they want to work with you, they'll want to work with you. If they say no, well, you're in the same position that you were in before anyway. And as long as you're doing it authentically, you're going to be like, as you say, you feel good about yourself. You're doing it the right way rather than walking away going, ooh, like it didn't feel right. That was not me. So both of you guys are such a great inspiration because not only you guys need to follow them, I'm putting all of your guys' stuff in the bottom. Uh, you guys are, are so good together, father-daughter duo, which it, it hits my heartstrings. Yeah. And uh, it's a really cool way to inspire other people to get out there, be yourself, and just do the dang thing. And yeah. if you follow their stuff, they do all the editing stuff too, kind of like how I do, except for they pump it out like... Well, here lately we've been pumping out a lot, but it, you know. it doesn't matter whether you're a team of one or two or 12. It's still a lot of work at the end of the day. But when you come to these shows, I'm a big fan of freestyling it because honestly, when you come here for the first time, you don't know what to expect. I can speak very strongly on that subject and, you know, come with an idea of like, okay, companies or a, a demographic of companies like, oh, I want to go check out the refinishing side of the industry. Okay, maybe you want to paint a car. Great, you have somewhere to start. Then you can educate yourselves because the people here want you to learn because whether you are on a smaller scale or a larger scale, at the end of the day, you're pretty much doing the same thing. You know, you're trying their product, you're being a consumer, but you're also gonna help them sell that product. So keep an open mind, be willing to learn, and also be willing to try other products too, maybe their competitor products. And the great thing again here is a lot of these companies are willing to Put their product against a competitor's and really show you how maybe theirs outperforms or how theirs is better in a certain application. Is they're all kind of different in their little way, and it's Absolutely. cool to learn that. Patents, styles, cuts, colors, God only knows. And the consumer will have different reasons why they want one over another versus like I might want something for one reason, you might want it for something else, and it's it's a really great way to network and get people connected. So oh, yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much, and like I'm. I'm probably going to hopefully see you guys a little bit more this week because we're like instant friends. You are Insta friends. You are such a positively radiant force here, yes. and I am so excited to see where you go with things. So no matter how small you think you are now, you are full on boots on the ground making it happen, and I can't wait to see where you take it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and if you guys want to follow along, you should follow my channel and theirs too. And uh, see you next time. Bye.